This is the Mobula 6 Freestyle HD, and what's so cool about it is it's one of the first drones to come with the HD0 AIO5. That's got every single thing you need to, for a tiny whoop on one board. That is a huge step forward for FPV. Everything getting into one board makes this simpler, more durable, and lighter weight. So how did this happen? Um, everybody thought, no way, you can't get all of those components onto one board. And if you look at it close, you can see there's a lot of components on this board. It is just packed. And one other thing you see is there's no MIPI connection. So the way that this works is it's using an analog HD video signal that's still 720p to get video from the camera, which is an HD camera. This is not a analog camera. And take that and bring it in. And it's done over one wire and that saves a lot of space on the board. It makes things a little bit lighter and a lot more durable. So with that, let's take a look at how it looks. Let's talk speeds and feeds. So we've got Happy Model 0702 28,000 kV motors, and it's gonna have a Tri-Blade uh, HQ light prop, light HQ, I can't remember the name exactly. I've just got a bi-blade on there right now. The weight without a battery is gonna be 19.6 grams. So this is the first uh, bind and fly tiny whoop you can buy off the shelf that's less than 20 grams with digital video in it. So cool. And why does that lightweight matter? Well, every time that you shave a little bit more weight off of a tiny whoop, it makes a massive difference to the flight performance. So getting under 20 is a huge step forward, very big. Uh, you'll just have to watch the video and see how I'm flying this. I remember when we first got the uh, Mobula 6 HD a few years ago, maybe three years ago now. And I think that was 25 grams. And that flew badly <laughs> compared to this. I mean, I, I, I came from 2018 Inductrix whoops that were brushed, and I thought it flew pretty great compared to those. Um, and I hadn't really gotten into the high-end analog whoops. And now that I have had some time with those high-end lightweight analog brushless whoops, I can say, man, we, <laughs> there was a lot of performance that we were 
trading to have digital video. Not anymore. Uh, you know, down at 19 grams, you're, you're right there with some of the, the most competitive analog whoops now within two grams. And, uh, yeah, it, it's cool. Th this thing just rips. I, I love flying it. Um, I've put so many hours on it. So this guy here has, uh, nine and a half flight hours on it. That's, uh, confirmed with the VTX menu on HD zero sticks down and in, and then you can check how many hours you've got on it. And then I've got this one here, which has 12 hours on it. So this is a 75 millimeter version that I built up with the AIO. So I've put a lot of hours into testing this. So I, I guess, um, over 20 hours of, of testing. And so far until today, everything's worked great. I mean, I was beating the thing up so much. I, I, I started to get riskier and riskier with everything. Um, I put bigger motors on, I did everything I could to try and kill this thing. And I finally killed it today. I, so I want to point that out. I, I killed this one. And the way I killed it is this motor here, it doesn't spin, uh, at least consistently, you know, it kind of sputters, which is the sign of a, a bad FET or a bad ESC. Um, so one of the four ESCs on this guy is unfortunately broken. And, uh, I wanted to point that out. Everything dies. Um, I don't know how many hours I've had on my other ones before they've died before. And I'm, but other ones, I mean, other, uh, traditional flight controllers that have ESCs in them because I've, I've killed probably five of these, uh, all in one boards before, not the HD zero one. This is the first HD zero all in one that I've had a problem with, but everything dies. And so I've got nine and a half hours on this one, nine and a half. And I have 12 hours on this one and this one is still going. So I just want to point that out, be very transparent with you. Everything will break if you push it hard enough and you fly it long enough. Um, I think what would be the key to making this last even longer would be a more durable canopy because what happened on the last flight is the, I, I hit something really hard and it pushed the camera down and it pushed the camera down so hard that the, the whole board just popped right out of the, uh, frame. And I think it might've bent some stuff on the board. Maybe, I don't know. Everything on the board works. The video works. Everything works except for that motor that isn't spinning quite right. So with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about some more details. Um, if you wanted a really durable canopy, you could get one of these, uh, newbie drone, I think goober canopies. I'll put a link in the description. Um, uh, so that that's going pretty good. So besides weight, why, why is this so great? compared to other digital systems that you may have out, might have available to you. Well, it's basically got the same latency as analog and the same fixed latency as analog. There's a one millisecond, maybe two millisecond penalty. Uh, but that's kind of a wash, right? So, so what you're looking at is 16.6 .6 milliseconds for the 60 frames per second video. And then you add another two milliseconds on top of that to get to the, the total frame latency. So what is that? Like 19, 19 milliseconds for the full frame. Let's do some quick math. All right. Um, other systems, all systems, uh, measure their latency by the first pixel change, not the full frame. So what that means is this system has a system latency of about two milliseconds. Okay. Two milliseconds. If you include the camera, everything that's something happening, like a light flashing, and then it's showing up in your goggle, two milliseconds. So other systems, the lowest you're seeing is maybe 22, 24 milliseconds. Um, and then on, on other systems at 60 FPS, you're, you're looking at more like 35, 36 milliseconds, right? So, so let's do a little timeline. I've got, um, one whole frame of video in 19 milliseconds. Multiply that by two. I've got is that 38 milliseconds. So I can see two full frames of video on this in 38 milliseconds and on other systems at 60 FPS, 
with like your budget goggles, let's say, you 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 just saw the first change. So I, you just saw the, like the first little piece, right, of the video, the, the little light flash. So I've seen two frames of video on on this at 60 fps. By the time I see one little change on another system, so almost two and a half frames of video compared to one frame of video if you look at the whole frame. That's why people love to fly this. You're flying this indoors, you're flying it really tight, proximity to things, and the latency does matter. It affects how you fly. So that's why we really like to fly analog. It's not just the weight, it is the fixed latency and the super low latency. And you get the same out of this, except you get a nice bump in image quality going to digital video. So the camera mount I'm showing here is one that I designed. Um, I settled on this TPU um, fixed camera angle mount after doing a lot of testing. And what I found is the floppy foldy mounts that are available to purchase from Happy Model and Beta FPV, I think it is, um, resulted in jello. You know, so you take off and then you'd see vibration in the camera feed. And you don't want that. <laughs> Uh, you want a nice, sharp, HD-looking picture, and a fixed camera angle completely solves that problem. Now, the pr and it's at 25 degrees, which was a pretty good angle um, for mixed use. I also have made a 15-degree all the way up to 40-degree camera angle mount option. I'll put a link in, to my Thingiverse in the description so that you can print your own. The Happy Model one that ships with this is inspired from the design based on the feedback that I gave that you, you want to have a fixed camera angle um, so that the camera is nice and stable. And that's at 25 degrees. Um, it is unfortunately probably also a contributor to why this AIO failed um, almost at 10 hours of flight time, mind you. So I'm also going to work on a little bit more robust camera mount design that uh, leverages more of the frame to keep the uh, impact from, from touching the board and instead it will maybe touch on the on the hoops, the boops here. So uh, look for that in my description also. I'll post that if I get that finished up. So let's talk some more details uh, before I forget. So. The board, the AIO5 board, is a relatively thick board. It's, I think, 1.8 millimeters, and that thickness is unfortunate. You know, you got to have the, the layer density in order to uh, fit all of the circuitry in here. Uh, that thicker board is also more durable, though. It's not going to bend as easily. A lot of tiny wood boards are more in the realm of 0.8 to 1 millimeter, just for reference. The weight of the board without motor plugs is 5.7 grams and with motor plugs as I've got right here is 6.3 grams. Compare that to like an, a really lightweight analog uh, AIO it's going to be around more like 4 grams. Maybe a little bit more with motor plugs but uh, yeah so there's a slight weight penalty to uh, putting in the digital components, but it's, it's overall, it's, uh, it's well worth the trade-off, I think. Another thing on here is it's, this does have a SPI, SPI, uh, Express LRS. Some people think that that is quite bad. That would be the Express LRS dev team because what this means is you cannot update Express LRS without also updating your Betaflight firmware. Now, there are some people that actually think that the SPI ELRS is better. Uh, and they're th thinking for that is it's simpler. You don't have to flash firmware uh, specifically for Express LRS because it's just going to come with your uh, Betaflight install. And it's it the reason that it's on here like this is it saves space. There just isn't a lot of space on this board to add yet another chip just for Express LRS. So running it on SPI means you're running it on the main uh, microcontroller that runs Betaflight, 
which saves a component on the board. So that's the reasoning there. Um, if you really want this and you really do not like Spy, there there is another TX and RX pad available and a, and a ground and 5 volt, and you can power your own Express LRS receiver and not use the Spy one. So just keep that in mind. You always have that option. Um, it's going to add another gram or something like that. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't have to decide that this is terrible just because it has Spy built in. You do have the option to install your own uh, external receiver. So let's talk about the next topic. So let me tell you a story about how this came about. I remember sitting at uh, Multi-GP Championships with Carl Zhao, the owner of the company, and Mookie. I don't know if Mookie will remember this, but Mookie had been showing Carl a really lightweight uh, whoop that he built, and he, you know, he he cut a bunch of corners, he trimmed parts of the the frame off to save weight. I think he didn't even use uh, isolation gummies, you know super lightweight. I think it might have been like 21 grams or something like that. And we were looking at it going, yeah, it would be great if if the whoops, bind and flies could be that light or even lighter. Um, what what would it take what would it take Carl to get this thing down to one board? Could you could you maybe do like a stack or something like that with one board? And we got to thinking, well you know what? Technically the old bite frost system all the way back. It used an analog HD link from the camera to the video transmitter. And that is a lot smaller and a little bit less expensive way to do video between the camera and the VTX. So what if, Carl, what if, what if you put that smaller system on a AIO? And that's, that's the genesis of this whole thing. So fast forward, and then you have the Eco VTX, Eco camera, and that uses this analog HD interface instead of the MIPI cable. So kind of, that's kind of your first step um, into this new system using AHD instead of MIPI. And it had an Eco camera, which is a very inexpensive uh, camera that does not have wide dynamic range, um, and it's also not a very high resolution sensor to begin with. So you get the benefits of HD0 for the stability in the image, but you don't get the high dynamic range, and you don't get the... Or it's not a high dynamic range, it's wide dynamic range. So you don't get that, you don't get niceties from the from a better camera. So the whole time that Carl's been working on this, when the, I think he's been working on this since January. So nine months? The whole time he's been working on it, every time I'd talk to him once or twice a week, I would, say, I would end our conversations with, Hey Carl, we need to get a much better camera for this AIO. And that's, that's where this improved camera comes from, the Lux camera that's on top here. So the Lux camera is essentially a Nano V3 camera, which is the best camera that you can get in a nano form factor for HD0. It's essentially that with a smaller case that doesn't have screws. And it has an AHD, analog HD output on it at 720p. And it has a 16x9 mode uh, that is a cut crop in and has a 4x3 mode. So that is this camera and <laughs> this camera is awesome. Uh, wide field of view, which is perfect for uh, tiny whoops. Uh, you always want super wide field of view when you're flying in a tight space. Uh, you don't want really narrow field of view, even if, even if it might look a little better um, to the eye. You want that uh, wide field of view for piloting reasons. It's got wide dynamic range, just like the Nano V3, uh, which means you have a you know, large range of uh, brightnesses that it can represent, a wide range of colors it can represent. And it's also a 1080p sensor, and then it does um, oversampling, basically, to, you know, 
you have the 1080p sensor, but then you, you downscale it in, inside the camera to 720p and then output the signal, and that does yield a, a better looking image. Uh, the other thing is it's a large sensor. I believe it's a half inch sensor, uh, which is great for low light. This is a fantastic camera in low light. All these things, I mean, they, they all total up to just my new favorite camera. Almost all the benefits of the Nano V3 with MIPI uh, cable, but in a lighter package, I think it's 2.2 grams, um, and a you know a simple AHD output, smaller, lighter, um, and compatible with this AIO. So that Lux camera is going to be available, I think, for $45, and I think the Eco camera is available for $30. I'll put links for everything in the description. The AIO is $99. Uh, so to fix this one, I'm, well, I'm going to get it for free, but um, it would be unfortunately $99. Um, if I look at the cost of Whoop AIOs these days, it's somewhere in the realm of uh, 50 to 60 bucks, depending on which one I look at getting. So definitely a little bit of an increase in price, but it is digital. All that said, um, if you want this broken AIO and you want to try and fix it, if you have experience fixing um, broken FETs, which I assume is what the problem is here, if you can prove to me that you fixed one of those before, leave me a link in, in, the de in a comment in the description. Leave me a, a link to you fixing a board, um, maybe like a, a YouTube video, and I'll review it. And if I see that you're capable of fixing boards, I will ship you this broken AIO for free. So have I convinced you? Do you want it? Uh, this is going to be available for pre-order for $199. That's the Freestyle, the, the, the Mobula 6 Freestyle HD. The race version of this, which I, I forgot to mention, is uh, that's going to have the eco camera, and it's going to be 19.3 grams versus the 19.6 grams of as the, uh, this one is. That's available immediately, so you can buy that right away. It's got the eco cam. Some people really like that camera. It's even wild, wider field of view, and it's a little bit less expensive. That's 189, and that'll be available to purchase right away. The AIO5 is $99, as I mentioned, also available right away. But the one I have here, I believe, is a one-month pre-order because uh, RunCam is finalizing the uh, production of the Lux camera, and, their, and Happy Model is finalizing the production of their uh, canopy for the Lux camera. So get your pre-orders in. I think this one is going to sell quite well and might sell out. Uh, and I think you're really going to want this for the upcoming Whoop season. It's just incredible to fly. Enjoy. Let me know if you have any comments in the comment section. I'll get to each and every one of them. Thanks. Bye.